Hello, my name is Derek Atkins, and this is Saints and Sinners, the video channel where we dive into the Bible to see what God has to say to us in today's world. This week, we're continuing a special series called Signs of the Times, in which we are looking at the signs that will precede Jesus's glorious return. So far, we've looked at the signs of false teaching and false teachers, as well as the signs of wars and rumors of wars. This week, we'll be looking at the signs of famines, earthquakes, and pestilences. In the second half of Matthew 24, 7, Jesus says, there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. In Luke 21, 11, Jesus adds the word pestilences to these signs. Let's look at these three signs. As I researched famines in history, I found a remarkable correlation between war and famine. While not all famines are connected with war, many are, especially during the 20th and 21st centuries. There's also a correlation between famines and diseases. There have been terrible famines throughout history, including the deaths of 8 to 10 million in the Soviet Union during the 1920s, during the Russian Civil War, and possibly 30 million deaths in China from 1958 to 1961, following the Great Leap Forward, which was China's disastrous attempt to overtake the West in metal production literally overnight. Sadly, China's famine was the worst famine in recorded history. Many of you may recall the famine that Ethiopia experienced during the 1980s when nearly one million Ethiopians died. I certainly remember the music video, We Are the World, written by Michael Jackson and Lionel Richie and performed by many famous artists, including Stevie Wonder, Diana Ross, Tina Turner, Kenny Rogers, Willie Nelson, and Bruce Springsteen. In the Bible, famine is often sent by God as a punishment for disobedience. In chapter 28 of Deuteronomy, God warns the Israelites that one of the curses for disobedience is famine. God even warns the Israelites that some cases of famine will be so severe that the Israelites will resort to cannibalism. King Ahab led the Israelites of the northern kingdom to worship Baal and Asherah, both of which were false gods. In response, God shut the heavens and no rain fell on Samaria for seven years. As a result, 1 Kings 18.2 tells us that Samaria experienced a severe famine. This famine was clearly in response to the idolatry that King Ahab and Queen Jezebel practiced and led other Israelites to practice. We need to be careful here because not all famines are the result of God's punishment on human sin. For example, Many of the Ethiopians who died during the famine in the 1980s were faithful Christians. However, the reason why this famine in Ethiopia occurred was because Ethiopia's communist government at that time made all Ethiopians attend indoctrination meetings day after day after day, including Ethiopia's farmers. As a result, no crops were sown, and terrible famine was the ultimate result. Over the past half century, there has actually been a decrease 
in the percentage of people who are undernourished. In 1970, more than 34% of the world's population was undernourished. This number dropped to just under 13% in 2015, a remarkable decline of nearly two thirds. Over this same period, the world population doubled. This progress is amazing and illustrates the truth that during the past couple of generations, our world has enjoyed a period of unparalleled peace and prosperity. Unfortunately, there has been an uptick in the percentage of undernourished people since 2015, in large part because of the war in Ukraine. And this brings me to the next point I want to make. If we take Jesus's words seriously, then we can expect to see an increase in the number and severity of famines in the time leading up to Jesus's return. Already, we're seeing more and more countries becoming increasingly concerned about food security. One reason for this is because the pattern of globalization has, has been shifting ever since 2016. In 2016, the Brexit vote in England and the election of Donald Trump marked the end of what might be called open globalization, an era that emphasized open borders and free trade. Globalization still exists today because globalization is a process that has been going on ever since humans started trading with one another thousands of years ago. However, since 2016, countries have become increasingly concerned with and asserting and protecting their sovereignty. During the past few years, food security has become an increasingly important issue thanks to the, dis to the disruption of supply chain during the COVID pandemic, as well as a marked decrease in food exports from Ukraine. For example, India has banned the export of certain types of rice. India, which now has the most populate, the most number of people in the world, has done this in order to ensure that her own citizens have enough food to eat. Earthquakes are another sign that will precede Jesus's return. Earthquakes have always taken place throughout history. For example, there was the Lisbon earthquake of November 1st, 1755, which resulted in the nearly complete destruction of the city of Lisbon, Portugal. Another famous historical earthquake was the Great Kanto earthquake of September 1st, 1923, a 7.9 magnitude quake that resulted in 300,000 homes being burned to the ground and the deaths of 100,000 people in the Tokyo area. During the past 50 years, there have been a number of noteworthy earthquakes, including the Tangshan earthquake of 1976, which was a 7.5 magnitude earthquake with an official death toll of 242,000 people. In 2004, we saw the Indian Ocean earthquake and subsequent tsunami. This was a 9.1 magnitude earthquake that produced, that led to a tsunami that washed all over the Indian Ocean Basin, killing at least 225,000 people. In 2008, there was the Beichuan earthquake in China. This was a 7.9 magnitude earthquake. Between 87,000 and 88,000 people died in this earthquake, and 5 million were left homeless in the Chinese province of Sichuan. The reason why this is called the Beichuan earthquake, one reason is because half of the town of Beichuan was leveled. 
And this was largely because of poor construction. In 2010, a 7.0 magnitude earthquake struck Port Au Prince, Haiti. There were two aftershocks of 5.9 and 5.5 magnitude. Not that many people were killed in this earthquake, thankfully, but 1.5 million people were left homeless after this earthquake. And then there was the 2011 Honshu earthquake in Japan. This was a 9.0 magnitude earthquake. There were aftershocks of 7.0 and 6.0 magnitude. This earthquake left 29,000 dead, but this earthquake and the resulting tsunami did lead to the Fukushima nuclear disaster, which is, as of now, the worst nuclear disaster we've had in history. Closely connected with earthquakes are volcanic eruptions because earthquakes and volcanic eruptions both occur as a result of tectonic plate activity. There have been a number of notable volcanic eruptions in history, including Mount Vesuvius in AD 79. This eruption destroyed the cities of Pompeii and Herculaneum. Thanks to the speed of the pyroclastic flows, many people in Pompeii were literally turned into statues, providing archaeologists in the 20th century with a, val with a remarkable picture of what life was like in these Roman towns. There was the volcanic eruption in 1883 of Krakatoa. This volcanic eruption, which took place in Indonesia, exploded with the force of 200 megatons. That's 10,000 times the force of the atomic bomb that was dropped on Hiroshima. And this eruption literally blew the entire island of Krakatoa apart. In 1980, there was the eruption of Mount St. Helens. This volcanic eruption, while spectacular, spale, pales in comparison to many other volcanic eruptions in history. However, this is the only volcanic eruption not to have taken place in recorded history on the American mainland. So that's why this, is, this eruption is significant for my American viewers. In 1991, there was the eruption of Mount Pinatubo in Luzon, the Philippines. This eruption threw more than one million, one, more than one cubic mile of material into the air and created a column of ash that rose 22 miles or 35 kilometers into the atmosphere. Fortunately, the number of deaths was much lower than it could have been thanks to a to good evacuation and round-the-clock monitoring. In 2010, there was the eruption of Ijafjallajökull in Ireland, I, in not Ireland, but Iceland. This volcanic eruption led to a massive disruption in air travel as 20 nations closed their airspace to commercial air traffic, affecting approximately 10 million passengers. And then in 2022, there was the eruption of Hunga Tonga Hunga Hapai. This volcano was an underwater volcano which resulted in seawater coming into contact with superheated magma in the volcano's magma chamber, because that magma chamber was below sea level. This in turn resulted in 50 million tons of water vapor being sent into the atmosphere. This volcano erupted with 100 times the force of the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima. And the key question we need to ask here is, 
has there been an increase in earthquake and volcanic activity? According to scientists, there has been no long-term increase in earthquake and volcanic activity. While some years may see more frequent activity, during other years, there's less frequent activity. You may have seen charts showing a dramatic increase in volcanic activity over the last 200 years, but this is because there has been an increase in the number of reports on volcanic activity. There were just as many volcanic eruptions in the past, but because there were fewer people living in the past and because there were fewer records kept in the past, we have fewer reported volcanic eruptions in the past. So does this mean that Jesus's prediction that there will be more earthquakes before his return is wrong? Not at all. Again, if we take Jesus's words seriously, we can expect to see a significant increase in the number and possibly the severity of earthquakes and volcanic eruptions in the time leading up to his return. And a third sign that I want to look at now is pestilences. In Matthew 24 and Mark 13, Jesus mentions famines and earthquakes. But in Luke 21, 11, Jesus adds pestilences to these signs. Pestilence is an old word that means disease. Today, we would call pestilences epidemics or even pandemics. Humanity has always suffered from disease. And throughout history, there have been terrible epidemics and even pandemics. The most devastating plague of all time was the Black Death, which wiped out one third to one half of the entire population of Europe in the 14th century and tens of millions more people in China and Central Asia in the decades before it reached Europe. In 1918 to 1920, the Spanish influenza killed 50 million people worldwide. And more recently, we all went through the COVID-19 pandemic. According to the World Health Organization, nearly 7 million people died from COVID. But according to a report by BBC News on May 5th, 2022, the actual number of COVID deaths may be closer to 15 million people. Personally, I believe we all dodged a huge bullet with COVID because this pandemic could have been far more deadly. For the sake of comparison, here are some figures for the mortality rate of different epidemics in the last two decades. SARS in 2013 had um, led to 774 cases of people who were infected with SARS. And of these 774 cases, there was a 15% mortality rate. Ebola, which began in Africa um, in, and raged from 2014 to 2016, uh, in, had a 50% mortality rate. That So you can see the numbers here. There were 28,652 cases and 11,325 deaths, close to 50% of all people who caught Ebola died. Let's look at what COVID-19 produced. During the 2020 peak of, COVID of the COVID-19 pandemic, there was a 14.45% mortality rate in Italy, which was terrible. That's comparable to SARS. But there was only a 6% mortality rate in the United States. And this was at the peak of COVID in 2020. Of course, the mortality rate in China is still unknown. 
But I think from looking at these numbers, when you consider that Ebola killed 50% of all patients who contracted Ebola, we dodged a really big bullet with COVID-19. However, there is a huge difference between the epidemics of the past and epidemics and pandemics of today. And that is the fact that in past centuries, it took diseases a long time to travel long distances. For example, as I mentioned, the Black Death took literally decades to cross Asia before it reached Europe. But today, thanks to modern air travel, diseases can travel from country to country far faster. As I said, it took the Black Death literally decades to travel across Asia before it reached Europe. COVID-19, by contrast, spread to almost every country in the world within a period of three months. That's incredible. So I think it's safe to say that the sign of pestilences has definitely become more intense in recent years. Like famines, God also uses disease, diseases as one of his means of judgment. In Deuteronomy 28, 21, Moses warns the Israelites, the Lord will plague you with disease until he has destroyed you from the land you are entering to possess. When Miriam rebelled against her brother Moses, God struck her with leprosy until Moses pleaded with God to forgive his sister Miriam. And when David sinned against God by taking an unauthorized census, God punished King David for his sin by sending a terrible plague upon the land of Israel for three days. Because of God's gracious mercy, God spared Jerusalem itself from judgment. While we do not live under theocratic rule like what was practiced in Israel during Old Testament times, God still uses disease as one of his means of judgment. In Revelation, we read of how God will use these plagues, will use plagues as one of his tools of judgment on the world in the last days. We do not know when Jesus will return, and we must be careful in saying that specific natural disasters, famines, or epidemic and pandemic are God's judgment. But God has given us the responsibility to call people to repentance, to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and to turn to Jesus in faith for the forgiveness of sin. So whenever disasters of any kind strike people, we should respond by caring for those who are affected by these terrible disasters, and we should share the good news with those who have lost homes and loved ones so that they may find forgiveness and eternal life in Christ Jesus. So that's... Um, so we've looked at the signs of famines, earthquakes, and pestilences. Next week, we will look at more signs that will lead to Jesus's glorious return. So if you like today's video, please click on like. If you want to receive more videos, please hit the subscribe button. And I look forward to seeing you next time. God bless.